Hi everyone, it's Annie, and today I have another book review for you guys. I recently got the arc for Ariadne by Jennifer Sane. I am so grateful to have gotten this arc because this is one of my most anticipated books for 2021. It's coming out on May 4th by Flatiron Books. So thank you very much NetGalley and Flatiron Books for sending me the ebook arc of this, and I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. I guess this is my brand now, just giving five-star review videos of feminist books, uh, just like The Lost Apothecary. So without further ado, let's get into this review. So this book is a retelling of Ariadne's story in Greek mythology. The overarching theme of this book is that women in history and in stories and legends have always paid the price for the actions or misdeeds of the men. The men get all the glory and all the stories are told about men and women have no room for stories of their own. The women who suffer because of these so-called male heroes, they never get their stories told. And this book changes that, which I am so glad about. It's described for fans of Circe by Madeline Miller and I 100% agree, I am definitely in the audience for this book because I adored Circe. Anyone who likes Circe or any of Madeline Miller's books, anything that takes a feminist spin on history or fairy tales, fairy tale retellings, things like that, will definitely enjoy this book. Also, I want to point out that I absolutely love this cover. It's simple, but so gorgeous, and I know there's another version of this cover, maybe for the UK version, although I'm not 100% sure about that, which I also love. It's a bit more glittery and shiny and fit for a princess, maybe, but oh gosh, I love this. It really actually reminds me of Taylor Swift's cover for Time magazine, where she's just staring. She is staring right at the camera, right at you, through your soul. And that's something that a lot of men do for magazine and book covers and things like that. But a lot of women don't do that. They're posed like, you know, models and things like that. And you're not focused on their face, you know, just looking at you. They're, you're focused on their bodies. And I think that... I don't know, maybe that wasn't intentional, but for, <laughs> but it really reminds me of that. Ariadne in this cover just looks so strong, and that's really what this book is all about, strong women. So I have to admit that before going into this book, I really did not know much about Ariadne's story, and I really didn't know that much about Theseus either. <laughs> And I really didn't know that much about Theseus either, which is where most people may have heard about Ariadne. Um, so she is the granddaughter of Helios, the daughter of the king of Crete, Minos, and his queen, Pasiphae. And since she's his daughter, she is the sister of the famous Minotaur in Greek mythology. And she also has a sister named Phaedra, who is a big part of this book, although the book is called Ariadne. I think Phaedra has about one-third of the book told from her point of view, actually, and I am so glad about that because she was an extremely interesting character with a personality all her own, very different from her sister Ariadne, but so, so interesting to follow and read about. So Ariadne is most well known for helping Theseus defeat the Minotaur by giving him the red thread with which he finds his way through the labyrinth and finds his way back. But of course her story doesn't end there, and her whole life wasn't all about helping Theseus, absolutely not. So I'm so glad that someone took the time to explore her life. And I want to address this. Jennifer Saint, this is her debut novel. I cannot believe that this was a debut. Her writing is gorgeous. I just, I had to force myself to slow down. 
I was torn between wanting to voraciously read this novel as fast as possible and slow down enough so that I could make sure I didn't miss a single word on the page because just every word felt like it was picked with such care and oh my gosh it told the story beautifully this book is written from a first person point of view mostly from ariadne's but like i said also some chapters are written from fedra's point of view and i loved that it was first person because it really allows you to instantly be swept up into the story you get to see things from their points of views and just really understand their thoughts and motivations behind everything that they do and their feelings after the events in the story and oh gosh this story makes you feel a lot of things a lot of things there is so much tragedy and sadness surrounding all of these characters especially of course the female ones but there's also a lot of hopeful scenes a lot of scenes where the characters feel like Maybe there is some good in the world left, and oh my gosh, just the way the story is weaved together is masterful. And I will absolutely read the next book that Jennifer Saint puts out. While reading this book, I could really feel how much Jennifer Saint cared about these women's stories. She put so much care into writing about them, and I'm so grateful for it. She crafted Ariadne and Fedra's characters to be so complex and so different from each other. All the women, including their mother, who is such a tragic figure of Greek mythology. They even mentioned Medusa several times in the story and how, you know, she wasn't a monster originally. She was a human being with thoughts and feelings and she wasn't bad until she was made that way and oh gosh it's just beautiful so beautiful they were both written really realistically as well although of course this is a retelling of myths the characters felt like they could have really lived in history or even now everyone felt like you know maybe even people that i've met before in my life they were really written with a very human quality to them, and I loved that so much. I really am very thankful to Jennifer Saint for writing this book. I can tell that this is gonna make it to my top books of this year, absolutely. This is definitely the best book that I've read this month, and it will absolutely be one of my favorites of the year, hands down. I also thought that the pacing and the structure of the story were really, really well done. Sometimes when books switch points of views, I get confused or I get, I feel like I'm taken out of the story, but I think that the way she put Fedra's story into Ariadne's was so well done and it really fit right in there, you know? It, it made a lot of sense and any time skips that happened felt right. You know, sometimes stories make time skips and you feel like Maybe the author actually skipped the interesting bits and now they're just kind of rehashing it and talking about the interesting part that happened instead of actually showing us what happened. But that is not the case in this book. Everything that happens feels extremely meaningful. Nothing is superfluous. Nothing can be missed. So I really, really encourage you all to pick up this book if you're a fan of Greek mythology in general, if you're a fan of feminist books or feminist retellings, if you're a fan of Madeline Miller, which I know many people are, please consider picking up this book. Again, it comes out May 4th this year by Flatiron Books, and it's by Jennifer Saint. So I really hope you enjoyed this review. I know I couldn't wait to film this after I finished this book. So I'll see you next time with more book reviews. Bye!